Hi, this is Simon, and welcome to another marvellous video. For a character as exalted as Superman to be on the big screen, there needs to be a lot of planning, writing, rewriting, and developing. And all of these must be done every single time a new movie is decided to be made on The Man of Steel. While several films have been made on this fan-favorite icon DC character, plenty got canned in the process. Here's addressing every Superman fan out there. This video will explore all the 12 cancelled Superman flicks that, despite all the planning, did not make it to the big screen. Are you ready? Let's dive right into the video. But before we do go into our explanation, we do have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Superman lives. It is true that today, even the thought of Tim Burton directing a Superman movie and signing Nicolas Cage for the titular role might sound crazy, but please know that back in the year 1998, things were very different. To begin with, the superhero movie landscape around that time frame was way diverse from how things are now. Inspired by the 1992 comic The Death of Superman, the undergoing script title was Superman Reborn, which was obviously changed to Superman Lives by Kevin Smith, when Warn Brothers hired the filmmakers to rewrite the screenplay. Smith, while writing, was explicitly asked to follow three exceedingly absurd guidelines by the producer, John Peters. Apparently, this version of Superman wasn't supposed to don his iconic suit, he wasn't supposed to fly, and to top things further, he also had to battle against a gigantic spider. As if these weren't enough, Peters also wanted the villain's sidekick to be a space dog. As far as the plotline was concerned, it had Lex Luthor working together with Brainiac and summoning Doomsday to block out the sun render Superman powerless and kill the superhero. Smith's script was sent out to a bunch of directors, including the celebrated Robert Rodriguez, but it was ultimately Tim Burton who signed a $5 million pay or play contract. One of the primary things that Burton did after signing the deal was that he brought on board his very own screenwriter, Wesley Strick, and no points for guessing that the movie went through yet another extensive rewrite. While all of that was happening, Nicolas Cage was signed to play the lead role. The cast also included Kevin Spacey as Lex Luthor, Chris Rock as Jimmy Olsen, and Christopher Walken in the role of Brainiac. As for the character of Lois Lane, you'll be happy to know that both Sandra Bullock and Courtney Cox were shortlisted. By now, the budget of the movie had become wildly expensive. We're talking about $190 million, and as far as the new script was concerned, it had lost its essence. Furthermore, the financial losses of Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin, Kevin Costner's The Postman, Felix Enrique's and Carla's Fire Down Below, Kevin Reynolds' 187, Kenneth Johnson's Steel and Barry Levinson's Fear made Warner Brothers hesitant to take such a monetary risk with Superman Lives. In the end, Dan Gilroy stepped in to take another shot at the script, and if we are being honest here, he was mainly hired to make the script budget conscious. Rest, as you all know, is history. Man of Steel 2 well, it did come as a major shock when James Gunn and Peter Safran, the newly appointed co-heads of the DC Studios, confirmed that a direct sequel to the 2013 movie Man of Steel wouldn't be happening anymore. But what came as a further punch in the gut to the DC fan community was that the flick was supposed to have Superman fighting against Brainiac. Add to this, Henry Cavill not returning to his role as the Kryptonian with superhuman powers and abilities, and if you ask us, it's, it's all a bit too much to take. Now with Man of Steel 2 dead in the water, he's taking a look at what really went wrong. The Man of Steel sequel was already in development back in 2014, and although it did not have a particular release date, Cavill was also geared up to reprise his role from the 2013 movie. So much so that Brainiac and the Kryptonians held in the prison-like parallel dimension were even considered for the role of antagonist in the sequel. Speaking of Man of Steel, the, the movie did make a profit, but apparently the film failed to meet the financial expectations of Warner Brothers. As a result, the company went ahead with Zack Snyder's 2016 Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, making it the second installment in the DC Extended Universe. By 2016, despite Man of Steel 2 having entered act development, the troubled production of the Justice League 2017 movie, followed by its critical disappointment, drove the studio to rethink its outlook towards DC projects, and this automatically resulted in the Man of Steel sequel not taking place anytime soon. You'll be surprised to learn that even by the end of 2017, the sequel did not have a script. It was in 2018 that Warner Brothers approached Gunn to write as 
well as direct a Superman movie, but he went ahead with the superhero flick, The Suicide Squad, which was released in 2021. Eventually, Gunn and Safran were made DC's new studio heads, and they took charge, with the duo fine-tuning their long-term plans for DC and moving into a completely different direction, one that includes a younger Superman, and let's not disregard Cavill announcing that he is no longer going to be Superman, it is only fitting to say that The Man of Steel 2 will never see the light of day. Superman Returns sequel Four months prior to the release of Superman Returns, which was a 2006 Brian Singer flick, primarily made it to kick off an entire new standalone franchise. Warn Brothers officially announced that the theatrical release of Superman Returns sequel, the follow-up, was scheduled to hit the screen sometime in the summer of 2009 and have Singer back as the director. As for the cast, the project was reported to have actors Brandon Ruth, Kate Bosworth, Sam Huntington, Frank Langella, Kevin Spacey and Tristan Lake, all reprising their roles from the 2006 movie. Singer even planned to work with the duo of Michael Doherty and Dan Harris for the screenplay. A little bit of digging gave us a peek inside the thought process of Singer and Doherty. The former wanted Darkseid as the primary antagonist, while the latter was more inclined towards making Brainiac the main villain. Also to add this list, Bizarro being considered as the villain for the proposed sequel. The movie was meant to be more action-centric than its predecessor and pick up specific narrative threads from Superman Returns, but with Singer's Superman Returns hitting the theatres and earning $391 million against a lofty budget of $204 million, suddenly Warner Brothers wasn't that enthusiastic about making a sequel anymore. Despite receiving a warm response from the critics, the movie failed to make much profit. Now, speaking of the proposed sequel, filming was supposed to begin in 2008, but got pushed back due to several reasons. Singer had already started filming the Tom Cruise uh, star of Valkyrie. Next, there was the Writers Guild of America strike in between. And let's not forget, Ruth's contract as a superhero getting expired in the process. Finally, Jeff Robinoff, the president of the production of Warner Brothers, made an official announcement, putting the entire blame on Superman Returns, stating how the movie didn't work the way the studio wanted it to, and thereby led to the sequel never getting made. Superman 5. Even a production house famous as the Cannon Group had to face severe consequences after the massive box office disappointment of Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Not sure how many of you know this, but Cannon brought the film rights to Superman right after Superman 3's theatrical release. The plan was to make a sequel, and The Quest for Peace hit the theatres in 1987. Not only did the movie tank at the box office, but it was also harshly criticised by the critics, the viewers, and let's not forget, the fans. In fact, the film had such an impact on Christopher Reeve and the rest of the cast that they just refused to work on any other Superman movies. Coming to the planned sequel of The Quest for Peace, Superman 5 was supposed to be co-distributed by Warner Brothers and Canon Films and scheduled for a 1989 theatrical release. In fact, Albert Pion was even reported to be directing the flick. As far as the plot is concerned, we don't have much information except for the fact that Superman was meant to fight Nuclear Man. As for the screenplay, it was never really written. Further Furthermore, with Cannon's bankruptcy in the picture, the film rights went back to the original owners, producers Aya and Alexander Salkind. Also, Warner Brothers, for obvious reasons, did not want to get into another budget clash with Cannon. Safe to say, Superman 5 was never made. Black Adam. We should talk. Black Adam vs Superman Things pretty much changed overnight with James Gunn and Peter Safran taking charge of DC's new studio heads. It's like this whole new era for DC movies is being redeveloped by the duo, which naturally means that most of the previously planned DC films are not going to get the green signal. Well, that brings us to Black Adam vs Superman, which is clearly not happening now. Trust us when we say that the movie was apparently in the works post the release of John Collette Serra's Black Adam, addressing every fan of the 2022 superhero flick can you disregard the mid credit scene where Henry Cavill's Superman is seen having a tete-a-tete -tete with Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam? It was a scene that literally had fans screaming with excitement, but now, with Cavill officially out of the picture as Superman, the scene looks redundant. It is difficult even to imagine how things can be organically continued in the DC Universe, given that an entirely new Superman movie is on the radar of Gunn and Safran. Coming back to Black Adam vs Superman, the 
movie was meant to do much more than just feature a face-off between two superhumans. It was supposed to mark an extended form of storytelling and focus on the character's journey, given that they both exist in the same universe. Also, with Johnson officially stating that Black Adam isn't a gun and saffron first chapter of storytelling, forget the movie here. The character's future itself looks quite bleak. It's pretty disappointing that Black Adam vs Superman got cancelled even before the filming started. Batman vs Superman Wolfgang Peterson was all set to direct a battle between DC's biggest heroes, and in this case, pick Colin Farrell against Jude Law. Sadly, Batman vs Superman never really made it to production, boasting a rewritten script by Akiva Goldsman. The story had Bruce Wayne retired post the death of Dick Grayson, Alfred Pennyworth and Jim Gordon. He meets the beautiful Elizabeth Miller and gets married to her. Clark Kent happens to be the best man at his wedding, and mind you, even Clark by then is divorced from Lois Lane. The storyline soon takes a dark and ominous turn when Elizabeth dies at the hands of the Joker while she and Bruce are on their honeymoon. This has Bruce blaming Superman initially, as the latter was the one to have prevented Batman from slaying the Joker in the first place. Next, Batman is seen coming out of retirement, donning his bat suit and beating the shit out of the bad guys. Of course, this triggers Superman, who, to be honest, finds it very objectionable, and this leads to a clash between the duo. In due course, Lex Luthor is revealed to be the main person, having orchestrated the whole thing so that he could have the superheroes against each other. The filming was supposed to begin in 2003 and was further scheduled for a summer release in 2004, but with two separate Superman and Batman projects, Warner Brothers fell into a dilemma in choosing which movie to go ahead with. Also, post 9-11, the studio had already started uh, analysing things from the audience's perspective, attempting to figure out what they would prefer. So, there's no denying that Batman vs. Superman was a captivating concept, it would also be quite gritty. There is no point in guessing that the movie was ultimately put on pause, after which the project disappeared. Superman Flyby J.J. Abrams' script for The Krypton's Finest was meant to be the first movie in an entirely new trilogy. The intriguing storyline had Krypton hemmed in by a civil war which ultimately as Jor-El managed to send Kal-El to Earth before getting sentenced to prison by his corrupted brother, Katazor. Kal-El gets adopted by Jonathan and Martha Kent and becomes Clark Kent, and ultimately meets and falls in love with Lois Lane. The plot also shows Lex Luthor as a CIA agent obsessed with UFOs, and Lane is determined to expose him. Eventually, Clark becomes Superman, but his heroic status is cut short by the intervention of a bunch of Kryptonians. They successfully kill Superman, only to have the superhero were re resurrected and returned for them. Mind you, the script also has a cliffhanger ending, thus paving the way for its planned sequel. With Brett Hatner hired as the director, casting for Superman Flyby began. Actors Josh Hartnett, Brendan Fraser, Ashton Kutcher and Paul Walker were approached to play the lead roles, and they all turned down the offer. Ratner had also expressed an interest in having actor Christopher Walken as Perry White, Anthony Hopkins in the role of jor and Ralph Fiennes playing the part of Lex Luthor. As for the role of Lois Lane, both Kerry Russell and Amy Adams were approached. However, Ratner unexpectedly dropped out of the project, citing casting difficulties, frequent disputes with the producer John Peters, and let's not forget the struggles to tell a story within a reasonable budget. This was when McGee stepped in as the director, but that didn't help the movie either. Warner Brothers wanted the shooting to take place in Australia, and Maggie's phobia of flying ultimately made him depart from the project. Lastly, it was Brian Singer who was approached to direct the movie, but the filmmaker rebooted Superman and worked on what was later known as Superman Returns. Superman Reborn the success of the Death of Superman comic storyline made Warner Brothers buy the film rights to Superman from the Salkind owners in 1993. Producer John Peters was also hired around the same time, and he, in turn, enlisted Jonathan Lemkin to write the screenplay. Titled Superman Reborn, the script focused on Clark and Lois's relationship problems and then brought Doomsday into the picture as the villain who Superman has to fight. Now, for all of you wondering what's the catch, Superman's death
death is shown right at the beginning, and with him pro professing his love to Lois, he gets her pregnant with his child. Within a span of just three weeks, the child is seen developing into a fully grown adult, and no point in guessing that he is the one who ends up serving as the resurrected Superman. Warner Brothers had reasons not to like Lemkin's script, finding underlying similarities with the 1995 Batman Forever. Gregory Poirier was brought in to rewrite, and while he retained the dark tone of the original script, he added Brainiac as the villain. Despite the studio being thrilled with the rewrite, they ended up hiring Kevin Smith to do yet another rewrite. Safe to say Superman Reborn never got made. Is that the best you've got? Superman, the Red Sun live action film. Back in the year 2017, Jordan Voigt Roberts pursued an interest and wrote an adaption of the three issue miniseries, Superman, the Red Sun, in hopes of adding it to the DCEU. He even had two separate actors for the characters of Superman and Batman, but with him pitching to Warner Brothers for a live action adaption of Mark Miller's comic, it was Miller who got back to him stating that the two of the author's friends were already approached by the studio to direct a live action adaption of Superman. Red Sun. Of course, this had Jordan backing out, but honestly speaking, there have not been any developments since then. We also don't have any further information about the live-action movie. Superman 3 Supergirl Producer Elia Salkind had initially written a treatment for the third installment in the Superman film series. Salkind outlined not only introduced Supergirl, but also featured Brainiac and Mr. Mitz's Piddlick as the villains. Now, if we take a look at the original draft, it had on display the father and daughter relationship between Brainiac and Supergirl, despite the two being cousins in the comics. And add to this a romance between Supergirl and Superman too, of course, Warner Brothers did not like it and rejected it instantly, and Superman 3, Supergirl, eventually became Richard Lester's Superman 3. Justice League Mortal This abandoned and cancelled superhero movie here was supposed to be directed by George Miller and have the duo of Kieran and Michelle Mulroney as the screenwriters. Based on the DC Comics characters of the Justice League animated series, the movie did boast an engaging storyline. It centred on Batman, who, upon being exceedingly disconnected with the metal humans in the world, ends up creating an entire army of robots in order to replace the Justice League. But his plan backfires, and it ultimately results in a whole unit of wicked artificial intelligent robots that are hellbent on dominating the world. The cast included Army Hammer in the role of Bruce and Batman, DJ Katrona essaying Clark Kent and Superman, Megan Gale portraying the character of Wonder Woman, Adam Brody in the role of Flash, Santiago Cabrera playing the part of Aquaman, and Hugh Hayes Byrne as Martian Manhunter. As per the reports, the tremendous success of Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight and the Writers Guild of America strike eventually led to the cancellation of Justice League Mortal in 2009. Justice League Worlds Collide When you have a storyline that has the Justice League going against the crime syndicate, one that compromises their evil versions on an alternate Earth, you know it's going to be interesting. So, to everyone out there who is wondering why this planned DC comic movie got cancelled, well, apparently, the DC Extended Universe production team was not happy at all with the cast. The team wanted a whole new set of actors and actresses on board, and because this did not happen, Justice League Worlds Collide never happened. Happened. Well, with this, we finally come to the end of our video here. Do hit us with your thoughts in the comment section and stay tuned with us. We promise to be back with more exciting content.